G'day, I'm Paul. So the Y62 Patrol, it's been out for like 15 years now. It's been a long time that it's been on the market and not a great deal has changed. But that's not a bad thing because one of the things I love about this is that big old naturally aspirated V8 engine under the bonnet here. And one of the biggest gripes we've had outside of that engine is the interior, it just feels like a 15 year old car. And guess what? Nissan's actually teamed up with an Australian company to change the interior here. And so today, I'm gonna to take you through this. We're gonna revisit this. Uh, we haven't driven it for what, two years now? So we're gonna look at the interior and the changes. We'll do a bit of light off-roading and just see whether this V8 is as good as I remember it. This here is the top spec, the TIL. It's priced now at just over 100 grand. So the price crept up by $3,000 to accommodate those interior changes. If that is too expensive, the entry level kicks off at just under 90. This competes with stuff like the Land Rover Discovery, uh, Toyota Land Cruiser. It's that big seven seat off-road capable SUV. Now, if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes that are on the screen. Or if you're on YouTube, you've got some chapters below. And are you in the market for a big old SUV? If so, have you heard of Help Me Car Expert? All you need to do is go to Google, type in Help Me Car Expert, or scan the QR code on your screen. It will take you to the Car Expert website. If it's not just me, or Sean doing the video stuff. We're like a big company, 60 full-time employees, and on our website, you're gonna find news, reviews, and also our car chooser tool. If you're unsure which car you want, all you do is enter in all of your requirements. It'll spit out a stack of options. You can read the reviews, watch the videos, and then we can even put you in touch with one of our friendly dealers. Now let's talk about the exterior. So it's interesting, this car is built in Japan, and it's built in Japan for all the other markets that get it but they've got a different interior for left-hand drive markets and they have two separate interiors. So we never got the benefit of that. Uh, we were kind of stuck with that old interior for right-hand drive markets. The cost of changing it was uh, far too high, which is why they kind of just threw it to a company here in Australia and did some work on it. And interestingly enough, if you have a look at the Rego on this car, it's almost the exact same as the car that we reviewed two years ago, which means they must have been working on this now for the past couple of years to sort of refine it, tune it, get it all working. So. Um, Interesting stuff. Now, external. Colors are 750 bucks, so not exactly the end of the world, but uh, you get a nice little palette to choose from, so it doesn't look too sort of austere and boring. Uh, I do love, uh, in contrast to this, what the Warrior looks like, and we did a review on that a little while ago. The link is in the description below. Love that it's got the side pipes, it's lifted, it just looks nice and mean. So you've got the executive corporate look, or you've got the crazy Warrior look. Uh, chrome down the front here with a big Nissan logo just there. You've got uh, full LED headlights with LED LED uh, indicators and daytime running lights, a washer there for those headlights, and then fog light down the bottom. Around the side here, you're sitting on a set of 18 inch alloy wheels. You've got a machined finish on the outside there and piano black on the inside. Now it is interesting, uh, when we go for a drive, we're gonna measure this, but I'm noticing a bit of road noise from these tires. So they're a set of jeweler all-terrains. It sounds noisier than I last remember this. So we'll see what it's like up against our calibrated sound meter when we go for a drive. But um, just an interesting one to keep an eye on. I noticed it at highway speeds. Uh, V8 badge there and then patrol up here. There is the next generation of the patrol coming. So we know that that's gonna get a twin turbo charge, petrol V6, gone will be the V8. So that shouldn't be too far away, hopefully in the next year or so for the Australian market. But given they've just updated the interior to this, I suspect it probably isn't going to be as soon as we think it is. Because if you've spent all of that money doing the interior, it's not as if uh, the new patrol is gonna come out next week and then they're gonna have it on sale. They really wanna amortize the cost and get some value out of the changes they've made there. Indicator here, no 360 camera. Uh, they have improved the camera as part of this uh, interior change, but unfortunately, no 360 camera available. Some side steps here for getting in and out. Wish these were uh, out a little bit further. I did notice when I'm sort of trying to climb into the car, they're a little bit awkward there. And when it's wet, you don't really wanna stand on them to climb in because you, you haven't got much room to secure your foot might sort of slide off and hurt yourself. So um, it would be nice if they could just stick out a little bit, maybe something for the next generation car. Chrome door handles there, privacy glass, you've got roof rails up the top there. And then come around to the back with me. Now around the back, you've got full LED tail lights, patrol, individual lettering along there with a Nissan logo. Sorry, the car's so dirty. It has been bucketing down this week. Today is like the first sunny day we've actually had in a while. 
it is very cold. Uh, brake light integrated up the top there. Now it is worth pointing out this does have three and a half ton brake towing capacity, but if you do uh, three and a half ton worth of towing, you're gonna to be putting around 350 kilos of weight on the back of this, which is gonna eat into your payload. So you're gonna be uh, down within that sort of 300 kilo range pretty quickly, and you're gonna eat into that again if you do have passengers and luggage on board. So worth keeping that in mind. The Warrior has an upgraded GVM, so if you do need that extra capacity, you still want that off-road stuff, but Perhaps it is worth uh, having a look at the Warrior instead. But let me know in the comments section below, what do you reckon about this design? Do you think this has dated? Well, I think it has 15 years on. Uh, I think it actually still looks pretty decent. So let me know what you reckon in the comments section below. Welcome to the interior of the Patrol. Uh, all of this looks familiar, except this center section, and then a couple of other things as well. So I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail on the stuff that's the same, because it really hasn't changed for quite some time. That means your sort of old school Nana wood grain through the center here on the top sections. That was actually the stuff they improved in the Warrior. They got rid of all this stuff and, and sort of darkened it out and just gave it a bit, bit more of a modern vibe. But anyway, uh, the rest of your sort of main touch points are the same. So steering wheel, gear shifter, that's all sort of carryover. Big changes though are through here. So up the top now, you're gonna notice a storage hole here, which is where the infotainment used to be in the pre-updated model. So they've now moved the infotainment down here. The infotainment system was, was really old school. So old school maps, no Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto, no digital radio, it really was just stepping back in time in terms of the way that it works. So that has been turfed. This has come into its place. Now, all of this work has been done over the past couple of years to really modernize this interior. And I'll tell you what, it has absolutely transformed the way that this car operates as a modern vehicle in 2024. So 10.1 uh, inch display down here, this accepts a lot of stuff. So while it may just look like a big screen, uh, they've gone to the effort of putting shortcut buttons down the bottom, a physical knob there for volume changes. In addition to that, they've also updated the sound system. So gone is the uh, old Bose branded sound system and inserted is a new Infinity branded sound system. So uh, speaker count has been reduced to six, uh, which you know seems like a step backwards, but the sound system itself is actually fantastic. So they've done a good job of integrating that within that head unit. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto both of those are wireless, really fast, easy to use, uh, no dramas there at all. I think probably the most exciting thing though is not only the inbuilt satellite navigation which you get with the vehicle as standard, uh, so that's all sort of pretty straightforward, it has traffic management, all that sort of stuff. Have a look at this, you get HEMA maps as well, so you get a one year subscription free of charge. Now, this is really cool if you're into your off-roading because HEMA maps are designed specifically for off-road driving. You even have the ability to run on-road maps, but also look at adventure. So this basically will tell you where uh, people have been previously and the things that you can actually do in that area. So you can see those little symbols there, like a little off-road track, you click on that, then it tells you what it is and what it's about and how to get there. So this is uh, really fantastic if you are into adventuring and you want to get around the place and, and see uh, what, what, is, uh, what is happening around the place. So that's a really cool setup. Now, in addition to all of that, you now also have AM, FM and DAB digital radio. So that's been integrated into that, um, into that system. This also has the ability to connect uh, Wi-Fi as well. So you're getting internet connectivity for features like uh, those maps. The other massive improvement here is the reverse view camera. Have a look at this. I mean, that is about a thousand light years better than the old version. The old one looked like you were literally looking through a potato. Uh, this is incredibly crisp and very sharp and, you know, minimum equipment you need on a vehicle this size to actually see what is going on behind you. So really cool to see that they've upgraded that as well. In addition to that, they've also changed this to a digital rear view mirror too. So it gives you better visibility if you do have the third row uh, active too. Move some of these buttons as well. So you'll see hazard lights there, rear cooler there. Um, charging, they've thought of that as well. So USB-A and USB-C. So you've got a couple of different options there. They've also integrated a wireless phone charger here as well, a 15 watt charger. So it's actually decent. You're not just gonna have your phone sitting there and nothing is happening. The only thing I don't love about this is it's like an abyss. And if you're anything like me, not that I'll admit to going to McDonald's, but if I do get takeaway or someone in the car gets takeaway, um, you could kind of just drop food down there. And I don't think you'll ever see it again. Really hard to reach down there. So that's probably something that um, needs to be thought about as well. Uh, you've got stacks of storage through the center here. If you open the center uh, console, you've now got a fridge in there too. 
So uh, they really have upgraded everything here. Now, just a reminder, if I am moving a little bit fast and you do want the information or the more detailed information on the patrol's interior, I've left links in the description below to our previous patrol reviews where I go into a bit more detail. Now, second row, being a big vehicle, there is lots of space there, especially for adults. Unfortunately, though, the second row doesn't move forwards or backwards. Not the end of the world uh, because they've actually apportioned enough room to the third row there, but your second row comes with uh, creature comforts like Evan, up the top there you've got usb charging plus your own blower controls too can also access your glove box or the center console from the back as well so a little creature comfort there third row surprisingly you can actually fit adults in there typically with these vehicles it is a bit of a struggle to get an adult in especially when the second row doesn't move but you can fit adults back there you've got cup holders there as well plus your own air vents too now when it comes to boot space you actually have a decent amount of room behind the third row and it expands to over two and a half thousand liters when you drop the third row and the second row as well so this is a certified mega people and thing mover Okay, so we've just hit the road in the patrol. Um, look, I'll keep this sort of high level given we've already reviewed this car, but um, I know it was a while ago, so I'll, I'll try and just keep it to the stuff that is, uh, that is most interesting. Um, and that probably begins with the engine. So naturally aspirated, 5.6 litre petrol V8. It's 298 kilowatts of power, 560 newton metres of torque, and that's all mated to a seven speed automatic transmission. Probably my favourite thing about this car is you stand on it, and it just moves straight away. And it makes the best sound. It is such a good sounding engine. And if you think back 15 years when this came out, a V8 engine was a thing. Uh, these days, they're hybridized, they're turbocharged, they're muted. There really isn't much going on with them. Whereas these guys have stuck with it. It sounds unreal, it's very smooth and uh, you know it, it just ticks all of those really good boxes. Now, obviously you will pay a price when it comes to fuel economy. They uh, claim an average of over 14 liters per 100 Ks. We are currently sitting on 13.8, so we're actually under that number. Uh, I have done a fair bit of highway driving in this, so it will bring that average down, but um, you know, you're not buying this and expecting it to be highly efficient. And given that it is, what, 30 grand cheaper than uh, an equivalent Land Cruiser, there is probably not much chance you're going to, to have to have 30 grand worth of fuel spent on this to make up the difference. So uh, I think that this is a really solid package there in terms of the drivetrain. Now it's a full-time four-wheel drive system, so it's constantly sending torque to all four wheels. That means that you do have generous amounts of traction. Where it is let down a little bit though is tyre noise. And I'm noticing a fair bit of tyre noise from these all-terrains. Didn't notice them previously, and it is mainly on uh, highway driving, course chip surfaces where you do notice that noise coming into the cabin. Uh, this is how it went up against our calibrated sound meter. If you do want to see how the Patrol compares to other cars that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Now, in terms of uh, driving in and around the city, look, the ride is pretty good. Uh, the steering is is overly assisted so it's still a hydraulic steering rack and i did notice the other night when i was trying to get this into a tight park that it does load up a little bit if you are turning it a little too quickly uh, over sort of left and right there so one of the downsides of a hydraulic steering system not the end of the world but i suspect the next gen of patrol will actually go to an e-pass uh, which is an electrically assisted steering rack to just make that type of maneuvering a little easier. Now this is a big vehicle, we're talking close to 3,000 kilos curb weight, so there is a fair bit of mass there. A lot of that is in the fuel tank as well, it's over, well over 100 litres in size, so you're adding that extra weight. Uh, but let's see what it's like across our sine waves here. So we do this at 130 to see uh, what the body control is like. Okay, here we go, there's 130. Yeah, look, it is a little bit bouncy, but it's actually really not that bad. You do have a lot of mass tying this down, so it doesn't really sort of uh, move around too much. It has a bit of body roll, which we'll see shortly when we go for a faster drive, but for the most part, if you're driving out on the country, you're hitting those continuous undulations. You're not going to get, uh, you're not going to feel nauseous or anything like that. Now, bumpy road time. What is it like here at 90 k's an hour on the worst road in Australia? It's just full of corrugations and potholes and just general nastiness. We've got a condensed sine wave here as well to see what it is like with um, high frequency set of bumps. So here we go. 
Yeah, that feels really nice and solid. Very impressive. Now, I do like here in terms of uh, visibility, I have great visibility down the front there. The wing mirrors are nice and big, but I've got this digital mirror here. So the quality isn't amazing, but it does give me some extra visibility out the back that I didn't have previously with the third row active. So very handy thing to have. Okay, so there is no sort of sport driving mode, but let's go for a bit of a fang around the track and just see what this feels like. Most people aren't gonna be driving like this, I get it, but we test all the cars in the same way. Oh yeah, a little bit of body roll there, but um, let's see what it's like out of here. Oh, this engine is so nice. It's actually pretty good. You can just lean on the throttle there and it just keeps pushing you along that torque band and it picks up speed really impressively for a, you know, almost three ton vehicle. And it's sort of moving along really nicely. Brake pedal feels good as well. Yeah, steering is just dead. There's not really a great deal of steering feel there. But again, I say this 15 year old platform, it's actually uh, doing remarkably well for such a, such a big and old vehicle. And that uh, V8 definitely helps. So yeah, look, it's not a corner carver, but uh, it is still good fun to drive nevertheless. Okay, time to do a little bit of performance testing. See how these big bus moves. Uh, so we're gonna go zero all the way through to 120 uh, so we can get our zero to 100 time and also our 80 to 120 overtaking time. Turn traction control off, dial up some revs and we'll see how we go. Noise is so good. All right, there's 100 and 120. Oh, I love that sound. It is such a good noise. Um, okay, let's see how that went. So, zero to 100, seven seconds dead for a three ton vehicle. It's not bad. Uh, and then 80 to 120, 4.88 seconds as well. So, still really strong in that mid range there. So, that's, uh, that's quite impressive. All right, let's go back and do a stop from 100. Okay, so dial up just over 100 Ks an hour. Okay, here we go. Oh, alrighty, let's have a look at that. That actually didn't feel terrible. Uh, 100 to zero, 3.05 seconds, 42.91 meters. So about on par with what you would expect from a vehicle like this that is sitting on all-terrain tires. So not a bad effort there. Okay, so how quick does it go in reverse? Here we go. <laughs> Just over 70 k's an hour. That is so cool. <laughs> okay, time to do a little bit of light off-roading. Kill those parking sensors. Uh, I'll run you through the, the high-level specs here, and we'll start with the numbers first. Just over 270 millimetres of ground clearance, so that is an absolutely whopping amount. It's a full-time four-wheel drive, but you can actually manually lock it into four-wheel drive high range, and in that setting, it's going to be sending 50% of torque to the front axle, 50% to the rear, so you have an even split there between the two. And then you also have low range. You have an assortment of drive modes here, rock, snow, sand, and on-road, along with a hill descent control and a rear diff lock. Uh, approach angle, 28 degrees. That is the angle of the face you can approach before you hit the front of the car. Departure angle, just over 26 degrees, which is the same, but in reverse. Then you get a weighting depth of 700 millimeters. So still pretty impressive specs for a vehicle that is uh, of this vintage. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over our offset mogul first. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it in auto mode. This is where we test traction control systems specifically for rear wheel drive. Given this doesn't have a rear wheel drive setting, uh, I'll just leave it in auto. We'll see how it goes with traction control on and how well it manages that. Then we'll come back around and do it again, but in four wheel drive high range in the opposite direction where it's a little trickier. Okay, setting off for our offset mogul to start with. They've recently fixed all of this, so <laughs> it's Probably not going to be overly eventful, but we'll see how we go. I'll try to dig it out a little bit. Um, okay, so we'll just drop the rear wheel into there. I'm just going to lean on the throttle. We'll see how well it manages. Okay, there we go. Rear wheel is in that little rut. I'll lean on the throttle. Okay, so there it is there. Absolute piece of cake. Yeah, look, um, unfortunately, because this has been leveled out, 
it is quite simple for a vehicle like this that has permanent four-wheel drive to get through there. If this was rear-wheel drive, it would be uh, a different story, but uh, because it's four-wheel drive, it sort of walks through there with these, and I suspect it's going to be the same story when we're going back in this direction, but we'll lock it into four-wheel drive high range anyway, and we'll see how well this performs. So you can see that changing on the screen ahead of me there. Uh, okay, so I'll line up these holes. Okay, so in this scenario here, I'm going to drop that tyre into the hole at the back there. And the whole idea is that we've got two wheels here that have limited traction, and we're going to be relying on the car's traction control system and four-wheel drive system to get it out of this uh, little hole here. So I'm going to lean on the throttle now. I can feel it pushing up against that uh, bit of concrete. Absolutely no dramas at all. Yeah, look, like I said, uh, this has been levelled out, so it is much easier than it was last week. But uh, in saying that, patrol is incredibly capable off-road. So we'll go over to our hill now where it should be a little harder given that it has been raining here and that should be a little slick. Now it's hill time. So we do this one in low range. The whole concept is that I'll do the first run through just with constant throttle and then I'll come back around again and try and come to a stop and then take off from a standing start. So I'll pop this into low range. I'm also gonna switch the rear diff lock on. Um, none of these settings are really appropriate for what we have here. We've got sand, snow, and rock, and it's none of those really. So let's just see how it goes with uh, constant throttle to start with. Here we go. Oh wow, it's already, it's already slipping and we're literally at the bottom. Uh, I'm gonna come back and just try that once more. Yeah, that is really surprising. Okay, uh, give it this is on all terrains as well. Here we go. All right. Yeah, there you go, it's going okay now. It must have just been a little anomaly there. Um, all right, we are at the top. We've got our little mud bog here. We'll just cruise through this. All right. And now, we get to test our hill descent control. Now, this is where a forward-facing camera would be useful, but I don't have that here, so I can't really see over the crest there, which is a little bit annoying. What I would recommend doing is, if you're doing this type of thing, get out, have a look at it. Make sure it's all safe and then you can hop back in and uh, have a crack at it. Okay, so hill descent control is on. I'm gonna crest this, come to a stop, and then just let go of the brake and see how it goes. So here we go. That's yeah, a pretty noisy old system. And sort of quite a slow descent there as well. So, yeah, you can tell it's an old school system. It's got the that sort of previous generation of traction control where it sounds like it's a bit of a machine gun or something running in the background. So, uh, yeah, it's fine. It does the job, but just a little bit noisy while it's working. Okay, take two on the hill. Uh, this time I'm going to climb up and come to a stop and then we'll see how the hill hold function works and then we'll uh, take off from there. So, foot off the brake, so nice hill holds and then onto the throttle. Yeah, piece of cake. Really weird, I don't know why it got stuck the first time around. That must have just been something weird going on there. Maybe the rear diff lock wasn't engaged yet or something, but um, we got up there in the end, which is uh, the main thing. Let's head over to the rocks. So 270 mil of ground clearance uh, should mean that these rocks won't be <laughs> any drama at all. Uh, I'm just gonna ride the brake with the throttle here. We'll cruise over this and see what it feels like. Yeah, nice, very smooth. And, uh, rock mode oh there you go rock mode actually makes a difference there with the throttle as well it's not as sensitive it kind of just dulls the throttle a bit because the last thing you want with these rocks is to have surges of uh, torque as you go over them because that's when you uh, have too much momentum and you can do some damage to the car but you know this is incredibly comfortable so um, yeah very straightforward so there you go so Nissan Patrol, you can see why this thing is still a fan favorite. Excellent engine, stacks of room inside, and the changes they have made to that interior. You know, a lot of manufacturers will just go and select some aftermarket uh, infotainment system and go, pew, that's fine, that'll do the job. They don't actually test it, they don't really think about everything outside of that. Here, they have thought about everything. It's got HEMA maps, it's easy to use, it's got CarPlay, it's got digital radio. 
It's got faster charging, wireless charging, you got a cool box. Like this is all stuff that this needed but didn't have and now they've been able to fit it here in Australia. So very impressed with all of that. And the pricing is still not outrageous. It could be so much more high when you look at how much everything else is on the market at the moment. Now, let me know in the comments section below, have you bought one of these? What do you reckon about these interior changes? Would this convince you to upgrade? I think it is a small price to pay when you consider how much you're actually getting in there. Let me know down there in the comments section. Now, did you enjoy this video? If so, can you please like it, share it with your mates, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel as well. But until next time, take it easy.